Call the meeting to order. Five, six, yeah. Thank you. On the roll call, Director Baker? Here. Director Gregory? Here. Director Calvin? Present. Director Davis? Here. Director Smiley? Here. I need a approval, a motion to approve the regular meeting agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none. Absolutely, Mr. President. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please face the flag. Hats off. Veterans say salute. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, this section is for public comment and communications for items not on the agenda. Persons wishing to speak on a matter of the, that is not on the agenda may be heard at this time, however, no action will be taken until placed on future agenda. Speakers are limited to three minutes. Please sign in with name and address at the lectern. Hello, John Green. Uh, <clears throat> I spoke to you guys um, at your last meeting. Um, and I wanted to kind of reiterate my thoughts tonight it's regarding the uh, replacement of the irrigation uh, pipes on Mission Street along to the county. And um, I'm going to go ahead, just go ahead and read this because it's easier for me. Um, as I stated at your last meeting, the original agree agreement with the county was to provide water and landscape maintenance for aesthetics, not the infrastructure. The pipes and valves are property of San Luis Obispo County and are on Slow County property. <clears throat> Their re repair or replacement are not in the purview of the CSD and have no affiliation to justify the use of street lighting money <coughs> for their repair. Additionally, water is a precious resource here and in the entire state of California. We live in a drought state, state 365 years, six, 365 days a year. <coughs> At my home, we've been consuming conserving water for over a decade. Uh, we have uh, limited our showering, clothes washing, toilet flushing, zero irrigation. Um, <clears throat> for over a decade, we've removed our irrigation system, ab abandoned our vegetable garden, planted all drought resistant plants, and collect rain in barrels this time of year <clears throat> so that we can water those plants later on. Uh, <clears throat> while this board chooses to spend $30,000 to repair someone else's facilities and pump our water to it at my expense, and <clears throat> while considering a rate increase on top of that, um, consider this, replant drought, uh, <clears throat> drought tolerant plants as, through attrition as what we have dies off, plant something that doesn't need watering. And uh, call John Pashon and Bruce Gibson for a round Okay? Just a thought. <coughs> Any other public comment? Please approach the lectern, sign in. <coughs> Mr. President, yes. uh, just a, a quick note about uh, landscaping. Uh, in our recent municipal service review that was released by LAFCO, LAFCO did recognize landscaping as a, a part of the street lighting. It is also recognized under state law and under government code 61100, subsection G. It says specifically street lighting and landscaping. Prior to the district taking it over, the county and county public works repeatedly said that they weren't going to take care of it, they weren't going to manage it. And their solution was to let an 80 year old man with cancer uh, take care of it on his own. So that's how the backstory to that. And, um, 
you know, um, I do think your alcohol and bar is a good thing, but um, that's how we're here today with that. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, special presentations, public hearing, uh, non district reports, San Luis Obispo County Organization. Sure. Sheriff's Department. So we had a note because this is a report of the full money that we can get in the sign of the station. It's only from our service today. Um, but we have no new business report right now, no updated current status. But if you guys have any questions or anything you can see increasing in the streets, you can address with me now. I can pass along to our guys as well as my sergeant. So if there's any specific questions. Okay. Yeah. Public have anything for the sheriff? You know, uh, thank you. Camp Roberts, nobody here for the National Guard? Community <coughs> Service Organization. Oh, Community Services Organization, sorry. All right, something. Good evening, directors, public. Scott Young, Senate Firefighter Association, April 20th at noon. We'll be having our 33rd annual Safe Fresh Days Parade, so please still have an entry form. They're available on the San Miguel CSD website and at the fire station. We hope to see you there. And in the report, unless you have any questions for me. Anybody? Anybody? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment? Please approach the lectern. It's done again. Service organizations, do you have anything to reply on? Okay. Uh, actually, I uh, yes, I do have something quick to uh, know. Um, from the uh, native sons of the Golden West, they have the San, the San Miguel parlor. Uh, one of their members had unfortunately fallen uh, ill, uh, Mr. Dennis uh, Perry, who runs DJ Boot Camp, and so he's been recovering and his son's been managing the store. Uh, Dennis has been very instrumental in working with both the Native Sons and the Lions Club um, on several electronic projects. And so, if you have time, you know it's always good to stop into his store and you know uh, support support business. He's done a lot for, over the years for our uh, community. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay, Roberts. Army National Guard. Anybody here for them? Staff committee reports. See the file, General Manager. Good evening. Just have a few things for you. Um, minor thing, but and nonetheless, uh, our workers' comp insurance, SDRMA, has historically farmed out their workers' compensation. They decided that after all the trouble we've been having and they've been having across the board, that they're going to bring it in house. So it won't really affect anything, but hopefully over time they'll reduce our overall rates. Um, Usually around this time of year, we also get a, a notice from the county uh, tax controller, or tax collector rather, that uh, of properties that are for sale for uh, non-payment of taxes. The county is not doing that this year because they had a competing priority with a large sale from Parisa um, Plains. So anything that would have been for sale this year would be for sale next year. Um, we applied for and were successful in getting another $7,206.39 for people who were uh, behind in their bills through the California Extended Water and Wastewater Rouge Program. Uh, that brings the total that we've received for customers here to $25,885. So it's helped out quite a few people. Um, and that's basically covered a a span from 2020 all the way to 2022. Um, last night was the Paso Basin Cooperative Committee. Uh, I don't know if Director Baker would like to say anything about that. Sure. Uh, uh, one thing I guess special interest to ask is they <coughs> modified their budget the last time we talked about it, they had a budget that would cost us $34,000 next year. And that has been reduced to a projected 18,000. So that's, you know, beneficial. Definitely about $16,000 less that we would have to contribute. Um, 
And they uh, voted for the ET water program for a satellite surveillance for over a three year uh, contract. So, um, first year is covered by a grant, and that's the bulk of it. And after that, it would, it would, it's like eighty to $90,000 a year. So that would be us, you know, anywhere from <coughs> 2400 to $2,700 added to the, the cost. But that wouldn't happen until 25, 26, and 26, and 27. Um, I think those are kind of the high points of what, what happened here. Any more comments on it? Uh, not really. There was a little bit of back and forth with the public, as there always is. Um, I think that the, the PVCC board take appropriate action to move forward and, and continue on a positive path. So hopefully the next couple months we'll see some actual <coughs> work product. Well, that's right. Yeah, they've got a, a $4 million of grant money left that has to be spent by uh, April of next year. <laughs> so it's going to yeah. be... Uh, Busy. <laughs> uh, what was the reason for the drastic reduction from the 34,000 down to 18? Yeah, primarily the, the biggest thing is they, uh, on the previous budget, they had some administration, uh, they were going to hire some people okay. to administrate. That was like 160,000. They had a little council for 75. They got rid of that. PBC administration cost 75. They got rid of that. Um, Grant development costs, they got rid of that. So it was primarily like administrative okay. stuff that they didn't, they didn't really need until Thank you. next year. Thank you, Thank you. anything else? Okay. Um, and also, it's that time of year again. So if you have not filled out your 700 form, that is due on Tuesday. So if you have not done it, uh, please see tomorrow. She'll be happy to help you get it done. So you can get them all done before Tuesday. Um, and on that same thing of getting things done, some board members and staff still need to do their sexual harassment and ethics. So if you've not done that or are not able to do that, don't know how, whatever the cause may be, please see tomorrow. She'll be more than happy to help you do that too. If you need a computer, you're more than welcome to come down and use our computer and get it done. Um, lastly, for the general manager report, uh, next month we'll be having a presentation from Slowcog. Um, the presentation is Local Roads First, a roadmap to transportation independence. They requested uh, some time at our next meeting to uh, have a presentation to present a sales tax measure that Slowcog is chaperoning. So if, um, I don't, I don't have any other information on it, but at any rate, uh, it should be a short presentation at our next next board meeting. Other than that, I'm uh, happy to answer any questions. Do you have any questions? <coughs> mm -mm. Um, question for clarification: ET is that evacuable tran transfer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, any public comment on that? Please approach the lecturer and sign in. Okay, we'll move on to district council report. Good evening. Um, I have nothing to report this evening. Okay. Well, thank you, Christina. Appreciate it. Um, district utilities. So, you guys have my report that's in the packet. Aside from that, uh, we fixed the uh, the water service that was leaking in the river road. And after that, we discovered two more uh, leaks on mains in the, uh, the one in the L Street Alley and one in the Pastry Alley. So those are being scheduled for repair and uh, two new service leaks. Um, so those will be scheduled for repair also. They're, that time of year where the ground is drying out just enough to shift and we're starting to see some leaks that could have been there for quite a while but as we see them we'll be addressing them. Uh, other than that, any questions you might have? I had a question regarding the, uh, the leaks. So are those in uh, 
newer lines we've been replaced, or is that older legacy lines, or is that further up where you know when you've done work and it's now you got the uh, fallout from when you work on a segment? So those are all in older sections, okay. on older older cast iron mains and steel surface. Got it. Thank you. I got a question. Uh, now I, I talked to you about the one on River Road. You said that was a service. Yes. So you, that's one inch line coming out of the. Uh, so it's an eight inch main with a three quarter inch line it was originally there. Our standard is one inch, so we replaced it with a one inch. Yeah. Right. But anyway, <clears throat> do you suspect uh, leaks in, on L Street and uh, the alley as being the same thing, or what do you know? I know you won't know until you dig it out. So we won't know for sure until we dig it out. Yeah. But the, the two that are on the main are not anywhere near service. So those, those are mains. The service ones that are leaking are on older services, so we don't have any record of them being replaced, so it's most likely a steel service from the 40s or 50s. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the, the River Road service was actually a newer service, but it, it uh, as I discussed with Director Davis the other day, the, uh, it looks like when they put the storm drain in, they, were, they caught it or smashed it or something. It was in the alignment of that storm drain, and it was crimped in one spot, so it's, it's very likely that it was an accident that happened when they put the storm drain in. Report. Any public comment? You said pro selecting, sign in. <coughs> and moving on to the fire chief's report. Good evening, President Smiley. The report is submitted as written. Let's have any questions. Anything? Anything? Mm -hmm. No. No. Uh, uh, comment from. You do have something then? Yeah. I, uh, I asked a question a couple couple months ago, Scott, uh, because I noticed one of our pick up, one of your pickups was missing, and I'm glad to see that it returned. It'd just be very interesting to know where it was at for about three months. One of our pickups were yeah, 8601. 8601 was in the care of Chief Robertson or assistant or whoever you want to call him. He's a uh, the officer and he uses it to respond. It's currently in the station and uh, department members have been using it to go to classes, local training, as long as the training isn't too far away. Uh, utility 863 was sold and we are planning yeah, on surplusing 8601, except the timing right now just isn't quite right. We are looking at our, our budget for next year. We are holding on that process right now. All right. I mean, it was, I just kind of curious. I didn't see it down there for about three months. Where'd it go? It's inside quite a bit. Sometimes it's. Not I mean, I, I, I've, I've noticed it in the last couple of weeks, which is good. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But it was missing for about three months. Never seen it down there. Never seen it anywhere else. So that was that was my question. It wasn't missing, but it wasn't part of that fire station. All right. Anything else? Uh, public Hey, sir, hey, approach the director if you have a public well, comment. Was in the district. Please approach here and go ahead and ask. He asked where it was and you didn't get an answer. Did you get an answer? Yes, no, you said it was here and it was there, but then he said for three months. I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. The the point, Miss Pice, is that the 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 8601 was in the care of fire personnel the entire time. That was the answer to the question. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Was it in district? Sir, sir, please don't speak out for the audience. Sorry. John Green, was the vehicle in the district for the last three months continuously? Was it here or was it outside of the district? I believe the answer was that it's here unless they went to a class outside the district. For three months, though, so it wasn't seen. It was somewhere else. 
They don't have flat sets every day. Right. It's my turn. Right. It's my turn. Right. They don't have classes every day. It's normally parked outside. Right now, it is parked inside. The question was, was when it wasn't visible to the public, was it in the district? That was my question. I'm not trying to cause a problem. I just want to know if it was in the district where it belongs. Okay. Thank you. Any other comment? Consent calendars next. The items listed below are scheduled for consideration as a group and one vote. Any director may request an item to be withdrawn from the consent agenda to discuss or change the recommended course of action. Unless an item is pulled for separate consideration by the board, the following items are recommended for approval without further discussion. Public comment. Any public comment? Please approach the lectern. Seeing none. <clears throat> Is there a motion? No, uh, I'll motion. Second. Oh, okay. I have a second. Okay. I have a motion on the floor to approve consent calendar one through four by Director Gregory, seconded by Director Calvins. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Today. So it passes four, one, zero. Okay, and board action items. Multi financial reports for February 2024 recommended received and filed by board consensus. Pages 60 through 102. Good evening. Uh, the financial reports are submitted to the uh, continue on from last month. We are starting the budget process. And the first report will be brought to the board in April. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions or anything I can help explain, please let me know. Are there any questions? No, I'm good. No. Do you have any questions? No. Oh. No. Okay. Um, Any public discussion, please approach the record and sign in. Okay, item two. Do we have to vote on that? So, number just one, we just need to consensus. Board consensus. So, I agree. Yeah. 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 Baker? Consensus? To oh. receive the file of financials? Oh, yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Item two, continuation of the discussion for potential action regarding the uh, adoption of water rates from the September 28th to 2023 <coughs> board meeting. Pursuant to Article 8D of the California Constitution, the San Diego Community Services District is continuing the discussion regarding the protest ballot submitted and will consider taking action to update the rate structure and increase its rates for water services. Resolution 2024-01, page 103 for 123. So this is a continuation from the previous meetings where we discussed the same, uh, it's the same Proposition 218 cycle. Um, Director David, or sorry, Director Baker, Baker and Director Collins and myself met a couple of times to discuss uh, rate alternatives. Um, the alternatives that were proposed would require a, a new 218, a uh, Prop 218 uh, protest uh, hearing, um, essentially raising the base to $48 or something similar and uh, creating either one tier or maintaining three tiers um, at a lower or you know, discounted tier rate. 
the uh, the original proposal was or the proposal in the current rate study would have a first year fixed charge of 32.30 for a one inch meter with a, big, or a variable rate of five dollars and seventy five cents. Um, the first year would have been a four point five percent increase uh, net revenue. And the subsequent years would have been 5% each year net revenue. And the proposal was based on the desire of the board to create a um, I'm not sure how to put it, but a lower rate for the for those who use less water, which is what we have right now, is a lower base rate with a uh, single tier which complies with Proposition 218 and allows for people to pay for their usage as they use it. They're not getting, they're not being charged for something that they may not be using, and it puts them more in control of what they have, what their bill is, how much they're using, and what it's actually costing them. Uh, the proposal that uh, Mr. Baker and Director Cowens and I discussed was a higher fixed charge, which would uh, ensure that even in lower usage times that the, the district has the very minimum amount necessary to continue operating. Uh, obviously there would be significant cuts, but it would ensure that the district would still be in uh, what they With a similar net um, increase to our overall revenue. Uh, the, the difference in what's been presented in the 218 that we're in now and what was discussed with the director Baker and director Collins is that that is above what is the minimum of this rate study. So it would require a new, not a new rate study, but a new 218 process. So they, the board has several options at this point. One, to approve this rate study as it is. Uh, mending the start dates, um, uh, essentially abandon this rate study and this 218 process and start another 218 process, uh, approve this rate study and direct staff to bring back the additional options for further discussion at the board level. Um, so there's several options that can be taken. It's up to the board to make a decision on how, how you best see going forward. The one thing that we can't do is if you elect to approve the rate or the 218, we can approve a lower percentage. We cannot approve a higher percentage. None of the rates can be above what was proposed in the, the rate study and proposed in the 218. So I don't know, Director Baker, if you want to say something. Yeah, so my uh, concern with uh, the current proposal from the consultant was that, that one for me or the public? No, actually, I don't. I need somebody's, the public needs. Yeah, I, I think I got it. Well, kind of what I'm proposing basically is that I think we need to have kind of a study session where we can with the public so we can show what I'm talking about and let everybody see it and get some input. But what the what the consultants propose is you know at the bottom of the tier, and according to the numbers I got, we got 65 people that don't use any water, but they have a meter, so they're getting a 39 percent decrease, then you get a 28% decrease for the next then 17. But the most of the people, it's like 497 people, according to the numbers I had, are getting an increase of either between 15 and 17%. And then if you go down the, the scale with the consultant scale, the more water you use, you start getting big decreases, where the person that uses the most water, which is 135 units, they're getting a 24%. So, you got the people who are using a lot, very little, and the people who are using a lot, they're getting huge decreases, and the people in the middle are, are getting big increases, and that's really what I, you know, I objected to. 
and also the, the flat rate was 32.30 plus 5.75. So I tried to even it out. All right, so I got a higher flat rate, like Kelly said. So the district is going to be guaranteed so much income. All right, and then I have a per unit rate for the first 12 units of two dollars and eighty cents. Um, and then again, this again, a lot of kind of study sessions, so everybody can see this. But you can see instead of getting a thirty-nine percent increase, the people using zero get an eight point six, and then it, it it works its way down. The people. It would really get hammered would be the people at five units because it's just the way the schedule works. At some point, they're going to have like a 17% increase, but then it drops down to 12.9 and then 8.7 and then 5.2. And my other feeling was at $2.80 a unit, it might encourage or allow people to use more water. All right, and if we sell more water, we're going to make more money. Okay, so that was, that's kind of the rationale. Of, of my thinking, but I think it needs to be presented to the public so everybody can kind of see this before we make a decision on on either or. Now, I know you had concerns about the different tier rates, but the only way to kind of level this thing out is to do that, and this, it seems to be that's been the tradition of the community anyway, and it just seems more equally fair than what the consultants did, where some people get huge decreases, and then the people, the bulk of the people are getting like a you know, 15, 16, 17 percent. So that was kind of my logic. So, director, um, I didn't hear. Did what was the your flat rate that you were? Thinking? My flat rate is 4850. 48. Okay. Right. Versus 5309, but 5309 does give you some water. So it works out, you know, the increase is overall about the same as what the consultants have, but it's just spread out as far as the increases and decreases. It, you know, it's just, it's just leveled out. But you know, like I said, this is just sort of a, a working idea. But I think I would like to see the board in public be able to have a discussion on it. So 